check engine light is no longer on and um, it's driving fine now it seems it hasn't came back in a in about uh, I would probably say 30 miles so that prob uh, that usually it's been coming on and off every time I, I clear it it would come back on and uh, so originally I was getting this check engine light um, once in a while for uh, P301 I think that's that, that's what the code was basically <clears throat> when I took it to AutoZone um, they plug it into their machine and they told me that it came back saying that the um, the third the fuel injector in the third uh, the fuel injector in the third cylinder is uh, there's a misfire there <clears throat> now uh, AutoZone was recommending that I buy a fuel injector um, and change it and change it but it can be a number of things when it's a third cylinder misfire and um, it, basically you don't know if it's the the uh, spark plug the coil or the fuel injector that's the problem so I had to diagnose that first because I wasn't confident in the fact that if I spend a uh, hundred and thirty something dollars on a fuel injector then uh, I would uh, it would solve the problem because you don't know based upon the, the research I was looking up so what I did was uh, I went home and then I took the uh, the fuel rail off and see if I can uh, if I can figure out what the problem is so we'll we'll show you in this next clip here okay back at home um, my garage is a mess once again I have to clean this up <clears throat> but anyway so throwing that code 3 P301 um, which means it's the third cylinder as far as I understand it um, when you read the code uh, this and if you look online this is one two three yeah. So I took out all the coils and then I changed all the spark plugs. It's still giving me a code. Then um, I was like, okay, the, 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 the guy who I bought it from told me that his coils are new. Um, these Denzel coils he just replaced recently So before I bought it. So um, I trusted him and I believe him that these are new. They, they look pretty new too. So I didn't think it was the coil. So it must be the fuel injector, right? Since I replaced all the um, all the spark plugs so the only thing left is one of the fuel injectors is actually jacked up so I wanted to figure out well how do I do this myself without paying the shop to do it for me because the fuel injector alone costs like hundred and fifty dollars or something like that and uh, to have the shop do it for you is probably another hundred fifty so uh, <coughs> I undid I undid this bar first and then I undid the um, these bolts back here. Um, let me see here. So this bolt um, and this bolt, and that pretty much pops off the fuel injectors. You have to remove hose over here, and then the fuel injectors can come off once you unplug these these things from it. Now. The next thing is what got me in trouble. <laughs> so when I took the fuel rail off and I popped off the fuel injectors, um, the injectors are these green things right here. One end of them goes into this fuel rail. The other end goes into the, the engine block. Popping this whole thing off, the fuel injectors come off. And then once you pull the fuel injectors off of the fuel rail, all the fuel that's in here comes spilling out. That kind of freaked me out. And I said, hey, I got fuel spilled out all the back of my, um, he said, don't worry about it. <clears throat> all you have to do is, um, just let it dry and, uh, let it, just let it air out overnight and then you can start it. It'll be fine. There's no active spark on it. It won't catch on fire. So that was good. But anyway, so I took it out, looked at the fuel injectors, couldn't see what was going on. Uh, so I gave up. And I try to put it back in. Well, when I put it back the way it was and I tighten it all down, I start the car 
drove around for a minute. The check engine light came back on. I was driving it and then I hear this hissing sound, right? It's a very loud hissing sound. I'm like, oh man, this is some problem that I caused. Um, and uh, I have to take it to the mechanic. So I sucked it up and took it to the mechanic. And uh, here, here's, the, here's what the bad fuel injector looks like. So like I said before, this top end here goes up into the fuel rail. This bottom end, let's focus on that here. See, that's that's where the fuel come, comes out. Um, it goes into your engine block. Now, <clears throat> what's wrong with this injector when they pulled it out? Well, as you can see, that hairline fracture crack right there. That is what was causing my uh, check engine light to come on like after driving it for a couple days and then resetting it driving again in a couple days so that hairline fracture uh, actually caused enough of a discrepancy in the engine timing and the, the, the amount of fuel that's being injected for it to keep throwing the light and uh, that's why I was <clears throat> burning a lot more uh, fuel than than normal on this car I wasn't getting the right mile per gallon like uh, the specs uh, say I should. The real problem that I messed up on was that not only did I not find that this fuel injector was bad, when I jammed it back in, either down or up, one of the, one of the uh, seals, um, what you call it? There's like a uh, rubber, what looks like rubber washers that goes up into the fuel rail that seals this part off. And or this part off down here and um, <clears throat> one of those rubber seals I jammed it in too hard and tightened it down and I busted a seal and uh, it was like a, a whole round seal but there was some there was a chunk of it just missing I don't know where that chunk went hopefully it didn't go into my engine block but it's been running fine now so I'm guessing it just fell off somewhere um, when the mechanic fixed it. Anyway, so I sucked it up and uh, gave it to the mechanic. The only reason why I know what was wrong with it was after he finished working on it and uh, 300 and like 50 something dollars later for diagnosing it for the fuel injector for the um, uh, for the seal. So afterwards Picking up from the mechanic uh, three days later, I thought that all my problems are solved. It's running, it sounds good. Um, there's nothing wrong with the check engine light. I don't see anything going on. I picked it up, great. You know, 400 bucks, $350, it hurts, but good lesson learned, I'm on my way. So uh, I'm driving along and then boom, check engine light comes on later that day when I left work. And I'm like, what the hell, what's going on? Um, so I came over here and I got my OBD2 sensor. Um, I bought let's see. All right, so I bought one of these things from O'Reilly's. This was um, about 40, 40 bucks, 45 dollars. Probably should have just gotten one offline, but I wanted to solve my problem right now. I didn't want to wait for. Amazon shipping <clears throat> Anyway, you plug it into here um, Can't see this very well Now the oxygen sensor is um, anywhere between $45 to uh, $99 at AutoZone or um, <coughs> O'Reilly's Was that 250 bucks or something like that just to fix the O2 sensor this time, I'm going to figure out how to do it myself. So, I went online, uh, googled where the P0141 code is. Couldn't find it. Um, I saw some crazy diagram that came from one of the uh, MR2 um, owner's manual guides. And it was very hard to read. It doesn't exactly tell me where it is. But luckily, I found a video that was made by Spider Lee great guy He's from the UK he has the sickest MR2 spider where he told us exactly where each O2 sensor code was so P0141 
is right in here um, by the catalytic converter. So let's show you where it is. All right, so here I've already taken these two bolts out, this bolt and this bolt on the tail light. And you just wiggle it out like that. It's, uh, it's got this little tab down here that goes into uh, this, this slot here on the back bumper. And um, <clears throat> anyway, take the, headlight, the tail light out, makes it easier to work on. And then if you look over here on my car, I don't know what your car or your MR2 might be like. Someone's fiddled with this before. So, on my car, there is, there's the cord. Um, point of reference, this is the uh, coolant thing. This is the, uh, the air box, stock air box. <coughs> And here is the uh, the cord for the O2 sensor. Now, this goes, I looped it over here, and this goes all the way down into there, it's, and it runs all the way down to the cat. So, we're gonna have you look at the cat here. <coughs> There's the, uh, the stock exhaust. And then the, uh, the stock exhaust goes this way, okay? And there's the your Cali converter. And right there, that right there where the light's shining on is the O2 sensor. Now, if you look at it from this side, this angle, you can see that the O2 sensor is deep in there and you cannot get a wrench on that sucker um, you have to get one of those O2 sensor wrenches um, so that's where the uh, O2 sensor wrench that you borrow from AutoZone comes into play all right so to solve the problem of the bad O2 sensor the I got this from AutoZone I'm right in front of AutoZone actually there it is and uh, what you can do at AutoZone is you can just rent their uh, tools and then once you return the tools they'll give you back the full amount so this cost me $32.99 or something like that with tax they charge you tax as well but when I bring it back um, they'll give me the tax as well as the full amount that I paid for it uh, if I bring it back in 30 days so this is the kit in which you uh, you you buy here and let's open this up so inside the kit what you got is the uh, a number of different um, O2 sensor removal tools uh, or heads so this one looks like that there's a slit right there and you can put your your wrench in this slot if you don't have that adapter you can put your you can use this one and then the cord goes right here um, so this slot is for the cord so you don't have to cut the cord or or put the uh, when you put the new one on you of course the cord is hanging out behind it too um, and then you can put uh, your wrench in this slot here and then when you torque it it just turns the uh, O2 sensor here on this one uh, you can put your wrench back here and this is for like uh, any O2 sensor that is like you know very deep in there um, for the MR2 spider I use this particular one because sorry about the lighting there um, because my the one that is bad is the one right behind the back bumper right after the cat and um, the way the, the, the stock exhaust I have on there is set up, <clears throat> I have to use this one because any other one would be too long. Okay, so here it is, the old O2 sensor. God, this wet weather hair is 
killing me. I got this flat comb over thing going on here. I looked up uh, O2 sensor for MR2 Spider year 2000 and I ordered this one. Um, that's the brand there. And uh, it just comes with the O2 sensor. I should technically be buying the expensive ones that are made by uh, Denso or Bosch. Um, is what they have. Bosch is what they have on uh, in um, AutoZone. Well, that's 99 bucks. Anyway, so I got this one, and this was I, I think I have to say like 13 or twenty dollars or something like that. Twenty twenty five. I don't remember, but I know it was less than fifty dollars, and it was a really good price, uh, free shipping. And then I plugged that sucker in, and tightened it with the wrench, and drove it for, as you can see early in the video, for quite a few miles since yesterday, and it hasn't came back on, which it normally does um, when I kept trying to reset it. So you do have to get the OBD2 sensor, reset it and then drive it and it comes back on well uh that's not your problem you have some other terrible problem but luckily for me i haven't uh i haven't had a new check engine light come back on since i put the new o2 sensor in i don't do only cosmetic stuff on my car i do have to fix my own stuff if you want to save some money so there it is uh the engine's running great now no problems with it and um, I'd like to thank uh, the guy I bought it from he sold me a great car the engine looks good there's no leaks um, just this uh, misfire and O2 sensor problem is the only thing that I've had um, issues with since I purchased the car so uh, it's a great learning experience for me I'm glad that I got a great car with no leaks no issues and we're gonna run this motor for a while Maybe I'll rebuild it and uh, put a turbo on it. I heard 1ZZ is great for turboing. Um, and, or maybe do the 2ZZ and then turbo that. So we'll see. Stay tuned for the, uh, the next episode on what I'm going to do with MR2. And um, if you have any comments, please leave it in the comment page. Um, if you have any experience messing with uh, your car, let me know. Tell me how it goes. So by replacing the O2 sensor, I literally only spent, what, 50 bucks for the OBD2 uh, reader and um, like 25, 20 something dollars for the O2 sensor did it myself when it would have cost me 250 bucks. There you go. All right, guys, like and subscribe. Leave a comment. We'll see you next time.